Russians target routers and switches, a casino fish tank got hacked, and WTF is GDPR. All that coming up now on ThreatWire. Greetings, I am Shannon Morris, and this is ThreatWire for April 24th, 2018, your summary of the threats to our security, privacy, and internet freedom. Our Patreon is over at patreon.com slash threatwire, and that is always the best way to support the show and will help us reach our next goal. So if you want access to exclusives, check out the Patreon link in the show notes below. And now, on to the news. The first story is all about Russians targeting routers, of all things. On April 16th, a joint US and UK report was posted by the National Cybersecurity Center of the GCHQ, explaining that hackers, who were working as state-sponsored actors of the Russian government, were working to compromise government business infrastructure and home routers, switches, and other similar networking devices. The report was issued by the NCSC, which is the UK's National Cybersecurity Center, the FBI, and the DHS. Affected systems include generic routing encapsulation, or GRE-enabled devices, Cisco Smart Install, or S. SMI devices, and Simple Network Management Protocol, or SNMP, network devices. The targets also included ISPs who support government and private sectors. So why would Russian state-sponsored attackers target these kind of devices? Well, alternative to a user's computer, owning an entire router would mean that they owned all the traffic on the network as well, so they make ideal targets. Routers and networking devices are rarely updated as well, and as such, are likely easy targets too. The actors used man-in-the-middle attacks for espionage to extract intellectual property like passwords and other sensitive information, maintain persistent access, and to help potentially plan for future attacks. The National Protection and Programs Directorate Assistant Secretary explained a need for responsible nations to use diplomatic, law enforcement, and technical means to address the threat by the Russian actors. Now, the data in technical analysis came from several different sources that were confronted with these attacks, in which the cyber actors were able to identify vulnerable devices, extract device info, map and pivot around those networks, steal login creds and login as stolen users, modify the device's firmware, operating system, and configurations, and even redirect victims to Russian-owned infrastructure. In the report, the agencies explained that the hackers had a multi-stage campaign, including recon, weaponization, and delivery of malicious files, exploitation, installation, and command and control. Now, unsurprisingly, the devices that they gained access to were old devices using legacy, unencrypted protocols or non-authenticated services, devices that weren't set up properly before being installed, or devices that just didn't support security patches and were end of life. Of course. Now, if you work at a company being attacked, there are several different solutions that you can take, with a whole section related to navigating the different protocols and determining if you are a target. To mitigate these attacks, don't allow unencrypted protocols or internet access to the management interface, obviously. Disable legacy protocols and change default passwords. Manufacturers should design products that do not include unencrypted protocols and force password changes from the default credentials. You know that we have been hit with the darkest IoT depths when someone's able to hack a casino through a hotel lobby fish tank thermometer. During a talk on Thursday, Nicole Egan, the CEO of the cybersecurity company Darktrace, explained that an unnamed casino was hacked by an Internet of Things device. It was a thermometer inside a hotel lobby fish tank. The hackers were able to pivot to other parts of the network, find a database of high rollers, and steal those credentials right out of the fish tank. Now, while exact information was not disclosed about the casino in question, Darktrace did release a report last year where they detailed a compromised connected fish tank. In it, they explained that a North American casino had a new attraction, so anybody going to Vegas, just look out for a brand new fish tank, with high-tech sensors that regulate temperature, salinity, and feeding schedules. The casino used a configured individual VPN isolated from the rest of the casino's data. Darktrace was able to identify odd activity with data transfers of 10 gigabytes from the fish tank to the cloud via a protocol used usually for audio and video. The data was transferred to an address in Finland for data exfiltration. Now, in this case, the attackers took advantage of the new device since it wasn't being scrutinized to the level that other devices were in the casino. 
In this case, Darktrace did help to mitigate the issue, but a rise of Internet of Things hacks similar to this only increased concern of ongoing issues with connecting all of our devices. Let's talk about GDPR, which Lauren shared on our Patreon community tab. The General Data Protection Regulation, or GDPR for short, is set to go into effect on May 25th, 2018. So it's probably a good idea to learn about this new privacy protection regulation and how it will affect you, even if you don't live in Europe. Now, while this is a European regulation, which is taking over from the last data protection regulation from, get this, the 1990s, it does affect folks across the pond as well, like me. This new law will oversee how personal data is handled and stored by private and public sector businesses and gives more rights to individuals over their data. Personal data as well as sensitive information are covered, so it includes things like your name, your address, your information about your political or religious views, your sexual orientation, basically everything that Facebook already generates about you in stores. So the GDPR was in negotiations for four years years before being passed by the European Parliament and European Council in April of 2016, giving the law two years as a preparation period for businesses. It'll be enforced by the Information Commissioner's Office, and if businesses do not enact new data protection under GDPR, such as making it much more clear whenever asking for consent about collecting information, then they can be fined by the ICO. Companies will need to report any breaches within 72 hours of discovery, and it needs to be disclosed to all affected users. Now, large companies of over 250 employees will need to have detailed information about why they are collecting data, how it is processed, and for how long. As for those fines, they will have to pay up to 10 million euros or up to 2% of their profits, whichever is greater for small offenses. Larger offenses will carry a fine of 20 million euros or 4%. Users will also have the power to access data, which is collected about them for free within one month of making a request, according to the GDPR. Luckily, businesses have a 12-step guide that they can follow to get prepared for the GDPR changes. It does list procedures and policies outlined in the GDPR and a walkthrough of each of these changes as well. American companies like Google and Facebook will also have to abide by these new rules. As previously discussed on ThreatWire, Facebook will be creating clearer communication in regards to security features, they're offering quicker data removal and increasing protection for children under the age of 18. Apple also introduced new privacy protections that include a data and privacy screen during setup of new devices. Apple will also allow users to get a copy of their data and deactivate their accounts or delete an entire Apple ID. More companies are likely to release their new privacy policy changes within the coming weeks. If you are a Patreon patron, you can send in your favorite stories on the community tab to get featured in the show. Every Friday, I'll pick three or more top stories for a voting poll that patrons can vote on to be included in next week's show. Everyone who supports ThreatWire at patreon.com slash ThreatWire, y'all are the reason that we can keep on bringing you news every single week, and we are on the way to our next goal, which allows me to cover the costs of upgrading the equipment that you see here in our new studio, and we will open up a live video Q&A just for patrons each and every month. And if you are already a patron, you already get access to an audio RSS feed, first looks at show topics, polls, discussions just for patrons, and a whole lot more. And any little bit helps us grow the show. So this month, my goal is to get to 850 patrons, and we are just short of reaching that goal. So share it with your friends. Sign up to donate just a dollar a month. It all helps. And also this month, we are introducing a new Discord server. So if you sign up at $2, per month or above on Patreon, you will get access to a Discord server just for patrons, which I've personally been hanging out in every single day, and it's super fun to talk to everybody. And hey, check out these super cute fur babies that some of our Patreon supporters sent in. I love them, they are adorable. Check out the perk levels on Patreon, and thanks again for keeping the show completely independent. And if you can't donate, hit that little subscribe button and share this episode with your favorite social media page. And with that, I'm Shannon Morse, and I will see you on the internet.